Ok, pessoal, então é... Bom dia a todos, é, desculpa o atraso, temos algumas dificuldades técnicas para conseguir tudo funcionar, mas agora eu acho que está tudo funcionando. É, sejam muito bem-vindos à defesa de mestrado do Felipe Schreiber. É, a gente está um pouco atrasado, mas vamos dar início. Então, o Felipe é aluno de mestrado aqui do PESC, Programa de Gerente de Sistemas de Computação. Estou falando isso porque tem pessoas aqui que não são da PRJ, vou explicando um pouquinho. E a, a defesa de mestrado é o ato que termina o mestrado e é uma apresentação do Felipe, seguido por uma arguição da banca, seguido por perguntas da plateia, e aí a banca então delibera numa sala fechada e o anúncio do resultado é feito depois. Okay? E agora eu vou converter para inglês, porque nós temos um membro da banca é, que ainda não fala português, que é o, o Maximilian é, Gregerson, que está aqui. And Maximilian is also an advisor of Philippe, along with me. And uh, besides the two of us, the Defense Committee has uh, two more members. Professor Raul Barbosa, up here, in the screen, who is a professor of PESC, a colleague of, colleague of mine here. And Professor Andres Perqueira, from the Federal University of São Carlos. Uh, it's the first time that we're actually meeting virtually. We exchange emails. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to start thanking both of them, uh, Romir and Andresa, for taking part uh, in the community. Okay? So without uh, further ado, we can, we can start. Felipe has about 30 to 35 minutes for the presentation. And uh, if there is any problem, guys, uh, just let me know. I'm going to be operating the computer there. Okay? Thank you very much. Felipe, all yours. Good morning, everyone. I'm Felipe, and today I'm going to present my master thesis, which is clustering networks with no attributes using program divergence. And before we start, I'd like to thank uh, the committee for accepting the invite, uh, my advisors, Daniel and Maximiliano, and also Professor Elson uh, from the Applied Mathematics Department. And sure, for everyone to uh, present to you today. So let's begin. Uh, I'll start with the motivation. So uh, since every day tons of data is generated, uh, deriving insights from the data structure for many applications, such as customer segmentation, identifying uh, anomaly, uh, anomaly attacks in networks, and so on and so forth. So uh, in this in this sense. One may wish to cluster this data to find uh, meaningful insights uh, here. And in the, in the classical approach, uh, we are giving a bunch of points in the feeling space and we seek to cluster them according to some function in a way that uh, in the way that members that have have similar characteristics are inside the same group. So the k-means is one approach to this problem in which we cluster uh, data points according to a distance function. But what if we are giving a graph instead? Uh, a graph is a known implicit data, so we must derive another objective function. And a common one is the, the modularity. Many approaches in the literature exist to, to tackle this problem. And two of them are the given Newman algorithm and the low bank. Okay, so now we begin the primary statement. Uh, we know that graphs can represent complex relationships, and each node may contain uh, a set of attributes, characteristics. Think about the Facebook network, for example. We have uh, the social network, uh, who I'm a friend with, and each person has its own characteristics, such as hobbies, interests, and so on. Uh, we can find meaningful clusters uh, using either the network or the attributes. But can we do better? I mean, can we leverage both sorts of data uh, to find better partitions? So we must define uh, first what is a good partition, and we'll see that later. I'll begin with two uh, related words, 
Apex launch the activity to pick up block module. And I'll talk about uh, this Samsung image. For the data generation, uh, it assumes that the network comes from the stochastic block module, which parameters data, uh, which defines uh, the probability of existing an edge between uh, two nodes. Uh, this probability comes from the Bernoulli distribution. And for the attributes X, uh, we uh, they assume that they come from a mixture of Gaussians which are parameterized by Psi. And Psi is just the mean and the covariance of the data. So, okay, now that we have this uh, generation uh, data model, how can we recover the labels, Z? Uh, the formulation they develop is the maximum likelihood estimation. And because there's some independence between the network and the attributes, the total log likelihood can be uh, expressed in two terms, one that comes from the network and another that comes from the data facts. So uh, they optimize the uh, expectation maximization procedure. Okay. Now, uh, sec second uh, related work is the contextual stochastic block model. It also assumes uh, the stochastic block model for the network and mixture of Gaussian for the attributes. Uh, so what's the difference? Uh, basically, it's the way it optimizes. It doesn't rely on the MLE, but uh, it, it rather uh, optimizes an objective function. Okay, and this optimization uh, is done via interactive refinement. All right. So our proposal. Well. We assume that uh, the network can be weighted, well, in the meaning that uh, at each edge we, can, we have eight, the number of the strength of this relationship, and they are sparse. Uh, we also assume that the weights and the attributes come from exponential distributions. So we generalize previous work in the sense that uh, we assume a broader range of distributions rather than only Gaussian. So uh, the result of this is that we propose a sparse formulation for the likelihood in terms of the Bregman divergence. Uh, the optimization is via pseudo MLE because we don't uh, optimize the full MLE because it's very hard. Uh, and they evalu uh, we evaluate our algorithms uh, with syntax in real networks. We also propose several initializations. Uh, in one of them, based on the spectral theory. Okay, so what are Bregman divergence? Essentially, a divergence is a function that measures the similarity between two data points, P and Q. Uh, in general, they are not symmetric, and they are also non negative. The equality of the divergence being equal to zero is attained if and only if p is equal to q. Uh, they found this, the, this form here. Uh, so for a convex function psi, we compute psi in a point e and minus the psi at the point q, min, minus the, the gradient of psi evaluated in the point q times the difference. It, it can be seen as a distance between uh, the point P and the tangent plane uh, at Q. Also, another interesting property is the convexity if we respect the first argument. Um, last but not least, we have that each exponential uh, distribution is related to a unique pair of, of convex functions psi and phi, which are due to each other. Okay. So, what's the relationship between Bregman, divergence, and exponential family? Um, the exponential family comes at this, uh, in this form. Basically, we have an exponential of the natural parameters theta times um, h of x, which are linear independent functions on x, plus a, a 
also term that depends only on x, a, a of x, minus the, the psi of t. Okay. The psi, uh, this convex function of psi, um, is the equivalent function, uh, which makes the the total <coughs> probability uh, over the over the domain to be equal to one. Okay. Let's take an example. Let's take the the Gaussian effect distribution with non variance. Uh, the Gaussian distribution follows uh, this, this first this first expression, in which a is the expected parameter. But also, we can uh, express this distribution in terms of the natural parameters theta in the canonical form that we have just seen. Uh, in, in a way that we have x times theta minus the psi of theta. And a linear, um, and a, a function that depends on, only on x. Okay. So, if it, we'd like to pass to the canonical form, uh, we we could do so uh, by some theta equals to a divided by sigma squared. Psi of theta is just uh, sigma squared times theta squared divided by 2. And the divergence of, uh, of this example is just the Euclidean distance x minus mu squared divided by 2 times sigma squared. Okay. Now, how can we use Bergman divergence to cluster our data? This is basically the proposal of Bernard G. And first, we must establish the objective function. What is seek to minimize is the expected, expected divergence, in which uh, we have a function phi defining the divergence. X is our random variable, and S is the parameter being optimized. It can be shown that the optimal parameter is uh, the expectation of x uh, regarding the upper order p. Okay, so what if we'd like to do the subfield cluster? Well, we must define the log likelihood. Uh, in this expression here, pj is the probability that a node belongs to community j. And we multiply this by the, <coughs> by the expression uh, that we have just seen, uh, which is the exponential distribution in terms of the divergence. Okay, and the sum is over k, with, uh, with k being the number of communities. In the E step, we compute the probability that a given node belongs to a community. In the M step, you optimize the parameters of our model. So, uh, in the M step is essentially the expected parameters uh, according to the probabilities that we found in the E step, the previous step. Okay. So, our proposal. Our proposal um, has the following points. Uh, we establish a threshold for the adaptive program, which was uh, thanks to Maximilian. Uh, we also assume the conditional independence between network data and attributes data. And we assume that the, the likelihood function is a product of uh, the likelihood uh, coming from the network and the likelihood uh, coming from the attributes. Okay. So here, F is the probability that two nodes uh, has a node xig between them, given that uh, a node i belongs to community zi and a node j belongs to community Z, zj. Okay. Uh, we assume that networks are sparse. So what do you do? Basically, uh, our probability density function for, for the weights uh, has uh, uh, probability mass centered at zero. Uh, so when x i j is equal to zero, how oh, you define? Some of the three. Okay. 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 Are we coming back? Oh, there, there he is. He's yeah. back. You, you came back muted. Okay. Okay. Are we back? Yeah, yeah. back. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, so we just want to restart. Where did you guys stop on this slide? It was before 10. Just before this one, yeah. There was an outage. So maybe you want to start from the from this slide, from the likelihood? Okay. First one, yeah. Okay. Um, so, we assume that the likelihood has the following form. Basically, we have the, <coughs> the project of the likelihood coming from the network and the likelihood coming from the data. Okay? Uh, F zi zj denotes uh, the probability that two nodes i and j belonging to community zi zj have an interaction uh, of the type xij. xij is our random variable for the weights, so it can, it can assume uh, zero value. So since we are assuming uh, the networks are sparse, uh, how do we model uh, the probability coming from the network. Basically, we have a uh, probability mass centered at zero uh, with, um, <coughs> with um, one man's PAD denoting the probability of not existing an edge between these two communities. Indeed. And we have a, another term uh, which model uh, the probability of observing the, the XID. So, we assume that uh, both F star and H of Y are come from the exponential family. So, we, 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 we express, we can express them as in, in terms of the Brigham divergence. For example, a goal term which we have just seen. Okay, so, the exact recovery threshold. Uh, Maximilian helped us to, to find this, uh, this threshold, and basically we state that uh, for two blocks, uh, the two hardest blocks to separate, if it then had uh, information less than one, the detecting recovery is not possible. But if the total information of the schema uh, divergence is greater than the norm, then exactly recover is possible. Okay. So, uh, we show now the log likelihood function, which you seek to maximize. Uh, okay. We, <coughs> we can see that the, our log likelihood uh, has three terms. The first term is essentially the, the divergence between our observed network AIJ and the probability of existing an edge plus a term uh, that measures the divergence between uh, our observed XIJ and the expected value between these two communities. And finally, we have a term that depends only on the attributes, which is the phi star y. Okay. Uh, so, for a single, for single node, uh, we'd like to cluster uh, and put it in a specific group. So, we have that the, likely, the log likelihood uh, of node i belongs to community k is given by this expression, which is just the sum of the divergence. Okay, so now we have our first order, which is the Bergman hat cluster. Uh, so, basically, what we have we are giving uh, initial question, uh, initial labels for the nodes, Z in it. And if we, given that, we compute our, our, our parameters, P, mu, and U. Uh, then, for each uh, node, we seek to maximize the log likelihood. So what, what we do, we try every community possible and put this node in the community that maximizes our objective function. Okay, now once we have done this for every node, we, we recompute our parameters according to the root that we have seen. And, and you do this process again until convert. Okay. All right. Uh, for the soft clustering, we must define uh, 
the, the likelihood uh, itself in the exponential format. So we have uh, the exponential of minus the sum of the divergence here. And we can do the following to <coughs> update our parameters. In this step, we compute the probability of log i belonging to community A. And it is proportional to the pi A times our expression, which is the explanation of the, the total sum of the divergence. And, okay. But uh, the problem that arises in practice is that this exponent here is very large, so the all the probabilities goes to zero very fast. So our solution was to simply add a constant that doesn't modify our probability distribution, but turns the exponent stable. So, okay, and in the end step, uh, we just compute our parameters uh, as expected. Okay, if now you have the software of our algorithm. Um, so we update the probabilities of each one of them to community A, and then we will update the parameters and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, now, how do we do the initialization? Basically, we have two initializations possible one that comes from the network and another that comes from the attributes. For the network, we basically use the Leiden algorithm, and for the attributes, we use Gaussian distribution models. Okay, now which, uh, which labels are better? Um, we use the Sharoff Hellinger divergence to to have this measure. So basically, if the network uh, information is bigger, uh, we use the labels that come from the Leiden algorithm. Otherwise, use the labels from the Gaussian mixture model. Okay, we also propose an inspector initialization. Uh, so how is it done? Basically, we first build two similarity matrices. One for the network, one for the attributes. Uh, for the attributes, uh, we use a, a kernel, which uh, which use Bregman divergence to measure this similarity. And for the network, we can use uh, the graph without any processing, or we can do uh, use like the Jacquard coefficient, uh, stuff like that to uh, to derive this way. Then we get the log lesson and for each one of these matrices and compute the eigenvectors. Finally, we cluster uh, our data in this new space. Okay, so here's our perspective initialization algorithm. Okay, uh, for the synthetic data sets, uh, basically we have uh, the attributes come from uh, from any, any exponential distribution. So we must for, uh, set the location of this distribution, which are uniformly uh, in the circle of radius R. For the network, uh, we derive from the, the surface block model, and we find two parameters, uh, the probability of existing edge inside the community and the probability of this edge outside the community, which are modeled by the parameters A and B, respectively. Also, we set uh, the, the weight for the network. Uh, so, the weight inside the community has one distribution, and the weight uh, between interactions that are in the in different communities have another distribution. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, now we are uh, going to compare a bunch of algorithms. Uh, for the attributes, on, we use the Gaussian mixer model. For the graph, on, we use Leiden. Uh, we also use our, our proposed algorithms, hard and soft dragon clustering. And we further compare an uh, attribute stochastic block model and contextual stochastic block model. Okay. So, in this first scenario, um, we basically take Gaussian attributes and annotate graph. Okay. 
the figure A, we evaluate the network information, uh, which is uh, expressed by the parameter A. So we are increasing the probability of the piston and edge inside uh, the community. Uh, and we assess the, the, the quality of the partition using the ARI, which is adjust, Adjusted Rent Index, which bigger the better. Uh, in the second scenario, we vary the this information, vary the radius. So, uh, as I increase the radius, the distributions for the attributes are more separated, so uh, the recovery gets better. So let, let's do a quick analysis here. In the first scenario, um, we can see that <laughs> that the our attribute uh, algorithm uh, basically remains constant since uh, since uh, we are not we are not varying the the attributes uh, distributions. And for the other algorithms. The, uh, up to A equals to 7, they perform worse than attributes only algorithm. But after that, uh, other algorithms tend to do better, and ours uh, outperform them. So, uh, in the second scenario, uh, we vary the, the radius of the, the circle, and we note also that the graph, uh, for the graph, the ARI is constant, and our algorithms do uh, tend to do better. Uh, the soft and hard versions in this case are very close to each other, so we can distinguish which one is better in, with these uh, tests. Okay. Okay. Uh, we did 50 repetitions for quality experiments. Okay. Now in this second test, uh, we have in the first scenario we are varying the probability uh, inside each each community, the probability of this and edge in, in, in inside each community, and we also vary uh, the radius of the circle. And in the second uh, experiment here, we have the inflated Gaussian rate. And we fix uh, the weight uh, between different communities uh, coming from uh, Gaussian with zero mean and unity variance. And we vary the, the weights inside each community uh, according to mu and unit, unit variance. We also vary the radius of this distribution. And you can see that above the red line, uh, which is the threshold that we have uh, just just discussed above this this red line, um, we have uh, the fraction of attack recovery uh, very very uh, close to one or even one uh, as far as you get from the the, the threshold. So as you increase the information, uh, the distribution information, the network information. The vector recovery is possible, and our algorithm uh, gets it. So, okay. Um, finally, uh, we we discuss uh, the problem in which the distributions, the data distribution, comes from another uh, from from this different distribution that that we we have. In prior. So, in the first scenario, um, we have the person for for the the weights, uh, the graph weights, and we do other assumptions for uh, uh, if the the distribution comes from Gaussian distribution from if anyway uh, from, from other divergence. So you see that uh, the result. Uh, doesn't vary too much, so making the wrong prior uh, doesn't affect affect much our our results. The second scenario, uh, we basically vary the the parameter, which is uh, the the parameter for the, the attributes, 
and and basically we set uh, the the new for for point one it was three and for point two it uh, we vary so we increase the attribute information okay. and again uh, the first one is the correct model for the attributes and if you, if you make the assumption that they come from Russian or other explanation families uh, or explanation distributions, uh, it doesn't affect too much the, our results. Okay. So finally, we go to the real data set. And we discuss Corus at C and Wisconsin, Texas, Cornell. <coughs> so here's a, a short table uh, showing two metrics which are the correlation coefficient and the so-called sniff. Uh, what we get from this table? Basically, uh, our metrics reach a consensus for, for, for which algorithm is the better. Uh, we also can see that the soft version of the algorithm often uh, performs better than the hard version. And uh, And, uh, and algorithms that use both software information often does, does better than using one network or only the attributes. Okay. So, to conclude, uh, our methods generalize many algorithms uh, by allowing any explanation distribution. And we also use this sparse formulation for the, the weight for net, net, network. So, um, other works that only assume Gaussians or don't even assume uh, the weights from the network uh, we, we are generalizing here. Uh, we provide new initialization methods. We also do uh, critical evaluation, which shows that our algorithm outperforms uh, many of the competitive others, the structure. Uh, we also can see that our net captures uh, both source information. And, and that in real, real data sets, uh, our methods perform well. Uh, this paper was accepted in New York, uh, 2023. And as a future work, we provide uh, three main directions. Uh, basically, we can provide an unscalable version of our algorithm and compare, we can compare with other benchmarks. Uh, we also can use other divergence, so we can generalize to other distributions that are not exponential. Example, the student and push sheet. And finally, we can f uh, find new initialization methods that are more machine efficient. Since the spectrum method uh, is ODM squared, so it's very hard, very hard work in terms of time. Uh, so that's it, and thank you very much.